Well, okay. Um, traditionally, there would be an introduction, and I'd have some kind of monologue or introduction thing to say. Uh, in this case, um, this is it. I just, I just said it. That's the introduction. Um, usually these are updates. Like, hey, here's what I did this week or this month, this year, uh, if it takes me a long time to finally get around to making a video about something. Um, uh, so in this case, it's kind of an update to say, uh, due to the advent, again, of 3D printing, I'm able to make some interesting things. And, and the amount of money that is being saved is extraordinary. I mean, it's exponentially great. And what is it confined to? A terrain. So why is terrain so important? Just take a piece of cardboard and cut something out? No. Uh, this is because people or the hobby requires a certain level of professionalism. We're professionals. Um... Yeah, you know, felt pieces for a road is passe, and it's embarrassing. So stop doing it. Uh, just go out and get some foamies. There's so many different colors. You know, just craft foam. Um, now, it doesn't go up and down a hill. True. So when you need to go up and down a hill, slope, then use fabric. Right? Uh, and go to a fabric store and match the colors. The all the, Do all that kind of stuff. But don't use cut out fabric and felt for roads and rivers. I know it's, you know, easy to say that, but just go get the foamies, go get the craft foam. It's so much easier. It cuts like, you know, butter. Um, 3D printing enables me to print all this stuff. Now, this is the beauty again of the 10 to 15 millimeter scale. Well, 10 to 12 to 15. Six millimeter, you could say maybe, right? GHQ 1 285th. The point is that, as you can see here, the blue uh, hexes are marsh. And now I have something to say about that because there's a certain limitation about when you do 3D. Now this is filament, this isn't resin. So I have, no, I have nothing to say about resin because I didn't do it on resin. This is all filament. Um, so the little blue hexes that you're seeing here are marshland. And, and hence the reason why you have to kind of print quite a few of them. A single marsh hex, okay, fine. What is a hex? Well, in Hex Command Mechanized, in the World War II era, um, one hex is hypothetically 25, uh, 25 yards, okay? Uh, some could say you should push that down to, to you know, 12 or half or 10 yards. Uh, which could be done, but it seems like uh, it's both easier and mathematically a little bit easier for the map creation to make it 25 yards per hex. If it was 10 yards per hex, um, then 10 hexes would be 100 yards. Now, is that the effective range of small arms? Uh, who can say, right, in, those, in World War II? I don't think so. Uh, you could say that, yeah, I mean, we saw it in Band of Brothers. They were at least 100 yards apart. Well, okay. Were they effective? Well, there's a lot of lead flying around. Okay. So these are marshlands, and then the other green blotches that you see, and I'm sorry the quality is not there. It's supposed to be, but it's not, even though it's a Microsoft Life Cam. Uh, those are the forest, my little trees that I've been printing. Again, a lot of this stuff is kit bashed from Thingiverse, free stuff online. Uh, the trees are fine; they work really good. And the other innovation I have, I can't, you know, turn around and show you with my pointer right now because I'm facing the main computer. Uh, we printed ridge line trees or tree lines. Uh, the thin green that you're looking at, uh, especially over on the far right, on that hill, that's a tree line. And the reason we did that is because when we use these contour shapes. Uh, uh, for the hills, you can't just put, you know, a blotch of tree up and up the slope. You can, but again, a certain level of professionalism. Uh, the uh, slope trees, we'll call them, they actually look pretty good. They're just a line of trees that go on the slope, right, on, the, uh, on that level of the hill. So, you know, 
uh, a line of trees could be three, five, ten, uh, up the slope on each level uh, until you get to the flatness and you can put your larger tree clump. Uh, that's what these rows of trees are you see also in other places. Bottom right hand corner you see we've printed a whole bunch of movement trays. Why? Um, 10 millimeter figures are very delicate especially when they have bayonets and I wish it wasn't the case. I wish they were plastic. Uh, because every time you go to touch them, if you are not really careful, you're going to bend those bayonets. And I've seen photographs of 10 millimeter armies in metal and everybody's like, wow, they're painted so well. But the rifles are all bent. Well, no, don't do that. Bend those rifles back to where they should be before anybody takes a picture. It's embarrassing. Can you replace rifle barrels or, or can you replace weapons on the figure? No way. No way. They're too small. So I wish they were made of plastic. Uh, but they're not. So we have these movement trays to put the Lexan bases on too. Uh, yeah, that's right. They're one uh, eighth of an inch thick uh, acrylic or Lexan clear bases. Approximately 50 by 40 millimeters. Uh, and there's about 8 to 10 guys, uh, it could be 12, uh, per regiment. And unfortunately, can you get them off the movement tray? Yeah. But the point is, uh, when you take them off that movement tray, you'd better be damn sure you don't need to move them again. Otherwise, leave them on the movement tray. And I know it's a problem because they're, you know, obtrusive. I mean, look at the movement tray. Can't be made, it can't be made uh, uh, invisible. But at any rate... If one is careful handling these figures, and I suppose we could put them on quarter-inch thick Lexan, but that would be too much. Uh, fences and walls, and the, they'd be taller than the trees, practically. It, every regiment on a quarter-inch would be almost taller than the trees. So we, there's a certain amount of scale that we have to obey. And one is the height of the fence has to look realistically at least some point to the height of the figures. On the movement trays, there's not much discernible uh, difference in height. It's appropriate. Another thing you might notice is that there are some little blotches of gray. Those are little stones that we printed. Why? Because uh, a certain amount of realism on the game table, little stones every once in a while. You know, oh, uh, outcroppings of, of boulders, uh, especially on the river itself, you'll see, or the creek, you'll see a uh, little uh, trio or more of uh, stones. And uh, that just makes it look a little more realistic. And I should, uh, with a white or silver uh, paint marker, uh, paint little uh, ripples around the stones, because that would be even more realistic. Uh, but they're not put on clear uh, sheets of plastic. They're, mount they're coming right off the printer, painted, and put on the game table. There's another one I used to do where I put all the pieces I printed from the 3D printer onto a clear piece of plastic is basically just like a 132 sheet of, uh, of Lexan. Really, you know, just a sheet. And I cut it out, and that was the beauty of using it, because it's very thin. And I, I glued the stones on and then drew the ripples on with a silver or white paint marker, which was really effective. But again, it's a question of manufacturing at home, me. And pulling this right off the printer uh, really helped. Now, could I have done it in blue? Yeah. What did I originally paint, uh, print them in? They were printed in green because that's what the spool is on the printer. So I had to paint them uh, gray. And then uh, painted the base or the raft of the print uh, blue. And so that's why you see them the way they are. Little, and the little stones are painted on their base or the raft of the piece, uh, kind of a tan gray, maybe green a little bit. Uh, but the, the idea is for it to blend into the background. Uh, anything else to say? There's, a, there's one building in here, uh, pretty much center bottom, that's out of scale, but that's because it was printed, well, it's actually printed for the Vicksburg game. Uh, so that little building is kind of out of scale. Oh, and there's a church. I'm sorry, that is the church. Uh, over on the right, uh, mid-center, 
uh, where all those regiments are. Um, there's another building, you see it by the line of, uh, is that a fence line? I think it's a fence line. That's another building that's printed. It's a stone house out of scale. It's small, in other words, it's too small. Uh, but with the 10 millimeter figures, it's pretty darn close to being in scale with the figures. So it was the church. It's probably be seven to eight millimeter. I downsized it because I'm like, why am I printing these things exactly the same? There, there's no need to. They don't need to be 10 millimeter houses. They can be five millimeter, six millimeter. It's just representative, as long as it looks nice. It also has to be printed at a good resolution. So I printed some of these buildings at 0.18. Um, cornfields top right and uh, top left center uh, those are simply like indoor outdoor carpeting thin though right because they can't if it's going to be a cornfield it can't be really tall uh, taller than the figures so I had to look online got it on Amazon very thin type of indoor outdoor carpeting um, plastic I guess maybe it might even been for an aquarium bottom uh, and then painted it uh, yellow on the uh, green. Well, no, it comes green. And then I just dashed it with uh, uh, some yellow to make it look like corn tassels. And that's not exactly an accurate looking cornfield, but it will do and it's sustainable. The problem that I had with my 3D printed cornfields is they're breaking. Why is that? Because the design doesn't allow for a supports uh, in the model, not supports just to make the model supports actually in the model uh, from cornstalk to cornstalk to keep them from breaking I'm gonna from now on I'm gonna do that as a matter of fact uh, there's other methods I could do uh, it'll take a longer to print but it will make the cornstalks break less in other words you have a cornstalk you're gonna put a little bar of plastic on this on the file you draw a bar or place a bar to the next cornstalk and I know they're really tiny. I mean, it's, very, it's a 10 millimeter cornfield. So the, the distance between the corn stalks is like a two millimeters. But here's the thing, you have to, unless it's a solid wall of cornfield, right? It's solid, it's solid, me, 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 okay, right? It could be that. And then to make them look invisible, you could print the wall behind the cornfields brown or something I don't know see what I'm saying so there's a corn stock then there's a support be it a bar or a, a piece of plastic to the next corn stock and that gets repeated maybe I'll uh, I'll try that and then do a video on how that works this would prevent the corn stocks from breaking and I think I'd have to use my resin printer because of the sophistication of that file uh, and it would obliterate all the other cornfields I have. I haven't talked to any other uh, designer, graphic artist, manufacturer, but I think that's the way to go. You have to put some kind of a thing in between the corn stalks to keep them from breaking from people handling them or them stacking up in uh, you know, the sterilite trays. Um, that is the thing. So there we are. Um, this is the game that we're going to be uh, playing uh, when we get around to it. It's very tough. Uh, it's not going to have everything you see here. The hills will stay, uh, but all the other, uh, the amount of forests isn't bad. And um, the amount of marsh is probably not, is too much. So we'll take, you know, half the marshes away. But still, it makes it a very difficult terrain. And this is hypothetical. Uh, simulation or a composite around uh, Vicksburg um, so uh, yeah so we'll see how that comes out and then uh, I'll come back with uh, an update about the troops now yeah but so anyway uh, we're almost done well we've started basing the 10 millimeter troops and uh, we're getting really close to being uh, good size uh, armies uh, to put on the game table including cavalry by the way and the last step is, as usual, artillery and uh, crews. Um, the crews we can maybe wait on, but we're going to get those guns out there. All right, so there we are. Come back later. Thanks.